tonight as we go into the word of God let me bring you a foundation of what God says in his word in the book of Hebrews chapter 11 he says the whole world is framed fitted by the word of God when almighty God created the heavens and the earth he spoke by the word of his mouth and every time his word comes forth creation takes place and he says in Hebrews chapter 11 that God used the invisible things to create the visible that which is not tangible you cannot feel it you cannot see it and he used that which is invisible and he created substance God's word comes forth from his mouth you cannot see anything he says let there be light you cannot see anything but when that word falls from his lips light came into being because there is power in the word of God almighty God who is the king of the universe he is the king of all kings just like an earthly king when the king wants something done he sits on the throne does he get off the throne and come down the steps and he tries to do something that's not what the king does when you are king you sit on your throne and whatever that you wish you command you speak and when you command everybody down runs and get it done and therefore every word of the king is a law it's a law that must be obeyed and everything that he says it must come to pass but my God my God is more than any kings that is in this world my God is higher than any ruler on earth my God is the king of all kings and therefore every time God speaks everything that he says it must come to pass that is why there is power in the word of God and as the book of Mark chapter 13 verse 31 says heaven and earth will pass away but my word will never change my word will never pass away my word shall stand as Isaiah chapter 41 says God's word will stand through all tests 
As Isaiah chapter 55 says, As the rain or the snow that comes down to the ground, And it will water the ground, It will feed the plants, And it will cause fruit to bring forth, and that rain that comes down, he says, so shall my word be. It will not return back to him empty. And therefore tonight, I bring you the word of God. That every word that comes from God, it will feed your spirit. It will cause life to flow into your being. And it will bring fruits that will prosper in your life. It will bring that power of God. That same power that created the heavens and the earth. That out of nothing. But simply by the word of God. God will perform miracles. As in the time of the Bible. After Jesus resurrected from the dead, he was 40 days with his disciples before he was ascended up to heaven. And he brought an important word to them. His last message to his followers. It is recorded in the book of Luke chapter 24. Here is Jesus' final farewell message to his followers. And he says in chapter 24, verse 46. Would you please read Pastor Jonathan chapter Chapter 24, verse 46. As it is written, as God spoke by his prophets, hundreds of years before it happened, some 800 years before Jesus came, the prophet Isaiah heard from God that revelation and he wrote. Saying that the Messiah will come. And he will suffer in the hands of wicked men. And he will be nailed on the cross. But he will rise again from the dead. On the third day, the Savior lives again. Jesus told his disciples many times that this is what will happen to him, but they never understood. They didn't believe what Jesus has said. But now that it has already happened, Jesus reminded them with this farewell message because what he was about to say was very important they cannot miss what God wants to tell them 
They must remember everything that Jesus said in this final message. And so Jesus laid the foundation to tell them that what I'm telling you is truth. Because I have proven to you that what I speak must come to pass. Then now I am alive. After I've been crucified, the grave did not destroy me. Death has no control over the Son of God. As it is written, as it is written, as it is written, because God has spoken, His word will never change. And it has come to pass. The disciples begin to listen with all their heart. Jesus was going to say something very important. He was going to speak about the future again. He would not be something that they have expected. But God is going to say something that he will keep his word. He says in verse 47, please read it. อาการเงินลีเซเน่คอมมาเปียวราเดนัสชาวลีเซเน่คอมเปียวเดคริสโตอีอควินอาเปียนาวนาเตียเน่อปิลุชินเตียโกเยรูซาเล็มมิวมา
That God has no strategy. You will not start at the place where your enemy is the strongest. Jesus said, It is written. God said it. And God will not change his word. Man will plan. But man must always change their plans. Circumstances will always change. I want to tell you tonight that you have heard from God and God spoke. You did not hear God wrongly. God has a plan for Myanmar. God has a plan for that land of Myanmar. God's purpose for that nation has never changed. It has never changed. You will think that it's impossible. It's the hardest thing to happen. It's too late. Or it will take too much. It looks impossible. But if God has spoken, No powers on earth. And no demons in hell can stand in God's way. God shall bring it to pass. Jesus reminded them. I'm telling you again, Jesus said. It is written. Repentance will be preached. The gospel that transforms the heart of man shall be preached. And it will begin in Jerusalem. Now Jesus said in verse 49 Read verse 49. Now Jesus speaks about the future. Some more. He says our destiny. Destiny is for the whole world. Our destiny is to win the world. It's for the world to have the gospel. That's why Jesus said about the end times. The gospel of the kingdom shall be preached to the ends of the world. Before Jesus returns. He says the end is the world. But the beginning is Jerusalem. But to prepare you, he says, I will give you the promise of the Father. It's not the promise of a man. It is not the promise of a politician. It is not the promise of a ruler. It's a promise of God. And God says, I promise you that you will receive if you wait in the city of Jerusalem. He says you wait there. You have an expectation. Let there be a longing in your heart. 
You wait until the Father's promise is given to you. What is that promise? He says you will be clothed with power. The power of God will fall on you. You will be baptized in the Holy Ghost. And God's power will be invested in your life. That's the promise of the Father. In one week's time is what we call around the world Pentecost. Which, as it is written in the book of Acts, chapter 2, when the Holy Ghost came upon them in the upper room, we are living in a time and a season moving towards Pentecost. And if you were alive 2,000 years ago, and if you were up there in the upper room when the 500 of them were gathered and only 120 was left you will be remembering what Jesus said you don't see anything you can't feel anything you don't know what you're looking for but you hold on to the word of God you wouldn't let that word of God depart from your mind you keep praying you keep confessing the promise you keep looking God your promise. And sometimes, when we wait for some time, I don't know what you are waiting for. There are desires that are in your heart. There are longings that brings you to pray more. You have an expectation in your heart. You obey God in every way you can. You please God the best you know. So that you will not miss the promise of God. It is just like these people in the upper room. They waited and they waited for that promise of the Father. You and I know today that that promise was given on the day of Pentecost. They were filled with the Holy Spirit. They were endured with power from on high. God's promise came to pass. I tell you tonight, God's promise will come to pass. God will keep His word. God will do what he says he will do. God will not fail us. He is true to his word. He is not a promise breaker. He is a covenant keeper. His word is truth. And he will not change what he says. Believe what he says. When we say we have faith in God, how do we have faith in him that we cannot see? How can we trust God that we cannot touch him? How? Upon what do we put our faith? Jesus teaches us. He says, upon his 
word. You have faith in God. Because you believe His word. You believe what God says. You attach your faith to His word. And that's when you have faith in God. That is why the word of God is so important. That when we receive God's word, if you hear his word, you will see his works. Because he will say it first. And it happens. When you receive his word, hold fast to his word. And the next thing that happens will be his works. According to his word. Jesus, everywhere he went, as the Bible says in Acts chapter 1, was 1. No? It's about the things that Jesus said and the things that Jesus did. My God is alive. Because our God is alive. There is always action. God is working. Believe his word. It happened in Jerusalem. Jerusalem, you my me. As it is recorded in the book of Acts, chapter two. The man who went to a canyon nema to know to Jira at time. On that day of Pentecost. When the Holy Spirit came upon these men, a hundred and twenty of them. Then she no win in her airy lure boma. Luteana said, "Oh, duri boma, sin tade." The Bible records. That when that when that event took place, he says in chapter two, in verse two and three, he says there was a sound that came from heaven. It was the sound like a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. It didn't say that it was a hurricane. Hurricane It was it didn't say a typhoon came. It says it was the sound. It was the sound like a the And that sound filled and the room. And then it says that there were tongues of fire. That means fire that rests over their heads was shaped like a tongue. That was over their heads. They were not on fire. It was a tongue of fire that was over their head. We must remember what God says. We must read the Bible as it is written. Because sometimes we look for things that are not what is written. This is what is written. They didn't have a hurricane that, or a typhoon that came. There was no fire that got everything burned around them. They themselves were not on fire. It was tongues of fire that was over their head. And they experienced the infilling of the Holy Spirit. With the evidence of the speaking in tongues. I know that this is what you love. 
We love the Holy Spirit. We want that encounter with God the Spirit. We want to be filled with the Holy Spirit and receive that heavenly language. You have been taught very well in this church. You ought to be thankful for the pastor that you have. Pastor Sarah. To impart to you truth. And to pray earnestly for you. That you will experience the Holy Spirit. She knows what is important. And the leadership that is around her. Desires that you be filled with the Holy Spirit. And be endued with power from on high. We live in very powerful times. Everybody wants to use power. And people that are out there, they hunger for power. They want to have more power. And they want to power over people. They seek for strange powers. And in a time like this, you and I as God's people, God has given us a promise that that power of God is greater than any power in all the world. And he wants to give us that power. And why do we want anything less? When he wants to give us the highest the greatest power in all the world is the power of Almighty God. And He wants to give it to His people. But I want you to listen carefully now. What happened after the Holy Spirit came upon them? so that you know what to desire beyond the speaking in tongues the praying in the spirit what happened when the Holy Spirit came upon them what is the number one Manifestation that the world saw that they were transformed. The people that came and watched these 120. What was different about them? What did they not have before and they have now? This is what you must catch tonight. And I pray that God will give it to you. That you have received the infilling of the Holy Spirit. God wants to add it upon you. Watch this with me quickly. Okay, Acts chapter 3. In verse 6. Chapter 3. In verse 6. Please. 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 Peter Peter stood up but he was not alone 
tuti avle mo bu the eleven stood up together with him tu babe le so in eri lu bu tu tha si re lifted his voice pedro atu ye atango tu se lu that means he raised his voice to the top tu balo le so lu shin tu ye atango tu a che zong pyo re and he spoke to them tu pyo re and he called them eri lu go tu kor concerning what was happening tu ye atat da re ma phit ni de a ya go ji bi do you think about peter then pedro ye chang wo tin kana sin na ji peter was a covered Peter ha chao yun ne du phit de Peter denied Jesus three times Jesus ko tong jai na du nyin ge de Peter went away with his head down Peter ha tu thwat pi de tu gaung ngom bi thwat pi de Peter was afraid Peter ha im madan chao tat de du phit de He locked himself together with the others inside of the room No ba phi la ta cha do du re ne tu atu du kwa pong ni ge de Peter wanted to give up everything Peter ha tu lou de a ya a lu ne pat ta bi la chao jin ge de I go back fishing Peter was weak. Peter didn't have the courage. Peter didn't have the courage. Two times, James and Mary were there. But Peter, when the Holy Spirit came upon him, then she knew when you know two persons that are coming. He rose up. Two matters are lying there. And he shouted at them. Two years at a time to say, "Look there!" What was added to him? Emma, pick up your gear, yeah. Bonus. Pao mian dui ya lai zuin xie yin jing wo mian dui ya de. What we need today. Da jiang di nei ma zhen hou duo luo de ya. In a time when people are in fear. Lu de ha zhao yu nei de a chai ma. When people are anxious and worried. Lu de ha so yin jing nei de pi nan nei de a ka ma. God wants to give the church bonus. Pa ya ga du ya a tian nao wo xie yin jing wo pei zhen nei. When the Holy Spirit came. Da jiao dan shi no wen yin no sin da de ka ma. He was transformed. Tu ru ha piao nei dua de. From quiet. Dei sei de du de ga ni. Timid. Chao yu nei du ga ni. Covet. Shou nei nei du ga ni. To become warriors. Xie yin nei du de pi la jia de. To be strong. Ku a shi de du de pi la de. Bold. Xie yin nei. With a lion's heart. Tu ru ha xie yin nei du de pi la de. Peter was not afraid of these men. Pedro a di lu re ne pat ta bi ma chao yu no bu. They were laughing at them. Tru ha Pedro go ji cha. They were mocking them. Pedro go lao mbiao cha. They were making jokes of them. Tru ne pat ta bi sa nao cha de. The Peter of old would run away. A ji nong a thwat pi ge de Peter ha. The Peter of old would keep quiet. No a mye na ma ba bi le a tei sin ni ge de Pedro ji. I'm not like them. I'm not part of them. No nga a e di tbae ro phoe de ma nga ma pa bu lu pyo ge de Pedro. But Peter was a changed man. Da bi me di de ka ma tu lou ma pyao le twa bi. Peter was bold. Jeyin la de Pedro ha. He spoke to them. Eri lu go tu pyo de. And told them that you crucified Jesus. Ba bi le Jesus go mino ha la wa ka rin tin tae de tu de. God anointed him. God loved Jesus. And God branded Jesus with His mark of approval. But you crucified Him. Peter, Peter was a changed man. Comes the next thing. Peter. Pedruha he was going to the temple you remember the story to pay man go to twa de kama and right there was a crippled man e ma lam ma shaw nai ne du go tu mye ne and peter and john stopped and ya ma pedru ne jo han ga jet pi do ma said to that man e ri lu go pyo de crippled from birth mwe ga de ga lam ma shaw nai mu crippled from birth mwe ga de ga lam ma shaw nai na but peter said to the man Silver and gold I have none. But what I have, I'll give it to you. I have it. I have it. I have it. And you can receive it. Because I'm going to give it to you. Peter. Peter. If it was the old Peter, he would be afraid. Tu chao yu ma. He pretend he didn't see the man. No, tu eri lu go tu matui ge lu wei tu tiao sao ma. Away yo tu shao bi tua tua ma. Are you afraid? Tu chao yu nei la. To pray for the sick. 
are you afraid to lay hands on the sick when the Holy Spirit comes upon you A miracle is going to happen. I know. He hasn't seen it before. It never happened before for him. He's seen Jesus perform miracles. And when Jesus was there, he was there with the extension that came from Jesus under the authority of Jesus. He was able to pray for the sick. Now Jesus is not there. This is a new day. He is gone from them. But, but Peter Peter received the Holy Spirit when he saw that impossibility no man can do anything for him Peter said I've got it I have got it I'm going to give it to you in the name of Jesus rise up and walk and no man Walking, jumping, leaping. He went into the temple. And when he was in the temple, and there was chapter 3. And you see this in verse 11. This lame man ran. He was healed. And it, was, it amazed the people around him. And then in verse 12, Peter says, It's not me. And then it's not me. It is Jesus. Jesus is healed. It is Jesus. Listen. It was not easy for Peter. Because they hated Jesus. It would have been easy for him to say it's me. I can start again. But he said he never turned away from being a weakness for Jesus. What did Jesus say? Acts chapter 1 verse 8 When the Holy Ghost comes upon you You will be my weakness And it's not just about what you say it, not, it is not just about the knowledge of the word of God It is boldness when this man rejected Jesus they crucified Jesus they even, even choose a criminal and let him go free to crucify Jesus they hated Jesus and Peter said Jesus did this. Jesus came. You can't stop Jesus. Jesus is here. You cannot control him. You cannot lock him up. You cannot kill him. You cannot stop Jesus. He weakness for Jesus. What a bold man that he is. And in verse 19, he told them to repent. He told them to turn around and change. Change your beliefs. Change your direction. Change and turn back to God. Because of that, 
he was arrested. Together with John, they were thrown in the prison. And they spent the night in prison. That was not the end. We're going somewhere tonight by the Holy Spirit. In chapter 4, chapter 4 in verse 8, Peter stood up and preached. It's like he's getting bolder and bolder. It's like something forever changed Peter. And it happened when the Holy Spirit came upon him. And in Acts chapter 4, in verse 8, please read verse 8. อคังเงชิโกจนเราอารมณ์ตุดูกว่าเป็นเมตุโกกาเปตรุติตัชชินอวิญญาณนี่ปิ๊ซုံเลยลูมะโกอโซยาดอมินอนี่อิตริลาอ
You can be very gifted. You can have power. But you need bonus. That bonus. That you will stop at nothing. You will use the power of God. And not hold back. And not hide yourself. You have been given giftings and talents. But you lack bonus to bring it out. And you let God use you. Gotta be bold. I want to pray for you. That God would bring bonus into your heart. You have the word of God. But sometimes you are afraid to apply the word of God. To obey God and step forward. You need bonus. Let me read to you another scripture. Now to change the Google pattern. Hallelujah. Let's let's look at another scripture. Acts chapter 4. Now they have been released. They go back to the people. Their own people. Are the disciples and leaders of the church. And they gave their report. And told them what had happened to them. After that great miracle of the cripple that walked. And when you look at verse 23, they started to tell the story. And in verse 24, please read. They, they lifted up their voices. They declared the majesty of God. And they continued to pray. Was it easy? They have just come out of prison. They have just faced the threatenings of the people. They could see the hatred in the eyes of the leaders. They were shown what will happen to them if they continue. What do you think that the disciples will do? You notice what they pray. In verse 27, this was their prayer. They prayed that there are danger. Their lives will threaten. He talked about, they prayed about Herod and Pilate. That means the Roman Empire to Israel. Herod represents Rome. Pilate represents the Jews. He says both the Jews and the Gentiles were angry with them. In other words, they have no friends. They have no support. Everyone that was around them was a danger to them. They spoke it out to God. And then you watch what they continue to pray. Verse 28. They prayed. 
They ask God. That his hand will move. And whatever that is the hand of God and whatever that is the plan of God. Now comes important. Listen verse 29. Read verse 29. What did they pray now? What did they ask? What you would think if they are in such danger and they have suffered in the hands of these people and they know the almighty God they know that Jesus could even defeat the power of death Maybe they would have asked God, God Kill them all Destroy them They would have asked God Fight for us They would have asked God Destroy them Send them fire, send them fire and burn them up. But they did not pray that. They did not pray that. It will be just like we. We pray. When it is so hard, we say, God, destroy them. They did not pray. Change the government. Take away the people. They did not pray that. What did they pray? Give us bonus. That we will speak. Give us bonus. They did not pray. God stop them. Stop them now. No. They did not pray that. They prayed, give me bonus. I tell you what this means. When the church is bold, it is stronger than the greatest power against the church. What is wrong today is not because things are, people are more powerful outside. It is not because they have more than you. It's because we need bonus. Let's look at the next verse. Now that the In verse 29. Okay, go. 29 and 30. Two verses. Let's read it. เมื่อเมื่อเมื่อเมื่อเมื่อเมื่อเมื่อเมื่อเมื่อเมื่อเมื่อเมื่อเมื่อเมื่อเมื่อเมื่อเมื่อเมื่อเมื่อเมื่อ
Jesus. But God showed us here. The early church. These men. Because of the bonus. They turned the world upside down. We must know what to ask for. If you can be a person that is bold. God will use you mightily. In the book of Ephesians. There is a prayer that Paul asked the church to pray for him. Paul, a seasoned minister. Paul, he planted the churches. Raised up the people. Sorry, He brought leadership into the church. He trained the people to do the work of God. He was a hero of the gospel. And an apostle and a pioneer for God. Look at the life of Paul. With all that he has done, to locate He knew what he need, to load it and he must continue to have it. To area yago sala bishibo load it. It's not about the gift of the Holy Spirit. It's not about the anointing of the Holy Spirit. It's not about the power of Almighty God. Paul knows that he's got it. But there must be something that he needs to carry that anointing to release that power of God to operate in the supernatural. He needed something to be activated in his life. Ephesians chapter 6 it says in verse 18 18 to 20 ตั้นชินดูอปาวโดปุสุตองซองชาวจาโลงาดีเอเวนเกลิเตียจองตั้นโจเนจีนองจิงโกแคนเลียตั้นตะมันอมุยากูปิวยาดีผิดเวโทเ
When Paul says to Timothy, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love and a sound mind. God has not given us fear. Many times it is because of our fears that locks down the gifts of God that shuts off the anointing of the Holy Spirit but because of bonus we will go forth and work the works of God how many of you here tonight you're ready for bonus you're ready for God to give you I want you to ask him for bonus. That he will give you bonus. He'll fill you with bonus. Ask of him, ask of him. Keep asking. You want to receive bonus? I have prayed tonight that there will be an impartation that God will make you bow like a lion that you have the bonus of Christ that nothing is impossible with him Oh, God wants to make you bold.